You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob, and welcome to episode number 12. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a reason I was going to say that. Anyways, it's 849. We are glad that you're with us as always. Yes, thank you for joining us. Thank you for leaving us a review. Thank you for sharing. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, Today we're going to be talking about how can you get super accurate maps in drone mapping? What kind of drone do you need? What type of software do you need? What type of accessories do you need? We're going to give you the summarized version. I mean, when I mean summarized, I mean succinct and summarized. Because if we were to teach you how to do this, it would probably take a couple days, actually, for details. But good news is we do have a class on that, and we have a new class coming up, which we call Advanced Mapping. In addition to that, we're going to be filming a surveying with drones uh, mapping class coming up later this year as well. Very excited about all those things. Um, again, thank you for being here. We do appreciate it. And uh, this show is brought to you by all the awesome people who support us during the drone you fly in. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yes, it is indeed brought to you by them always. And also by our friends at DynexDrones.com. And that is D-Y-N-N-E-X, D-R-O-N-E-S dot com. If you're looking to grow your business, get some uh, higher end drones. Maybe you just need to add to your fleet because you got some people maybe working for you. Hope so. Good for you. So whatever you're looking to do in terms of getting a new drone for your business or just getting a drone in general, go to DynexDrones.com. You can literally buy something with zero down, get started with payments as low as 15 bucks a month and be up in the air in no time. Check them out. You can get $25 off of your order by using the coupon code DroneUSAVE25. And by the way, go to dynextdrones.com slash drone you to get that coupon code to work. My name is Dirk from Germany. This is my second question to this forum. My question is about camera accuracy. Inspired by the episode 807, the camera zooming topic, the following question arose. Problem. I want to measure a piece of a bigger structure with a size of about 5 millimeter, which is 1.9 inch and get a reliable accuracy down to one millimeter, which is 0.3 inch. Question, what kind of camera would you recommend? What kind of software would you use to trace these measures? How stable must the drone be in order to take these images? And I'm thinking about GPS coordinates, uh, stability of the signal and the like. What are the risks in terms of reliability and repeatability? Would you take the measure with JPEG and or RAW format? Well, again, thanks for answering this question. I highly appreciate your work. Awesome, Dirk. Thank you very much for calling in with that question. Very detailed. We love those kinds of detailed questions. There was one little detail we need to clarify. We do need so to it's clarify. Not confusing. So one centimeter is the equivalent to 0.39 inches. Yeah, so, I think he just maybe misspoke a little bit there with millimeters instead of centimeters is what he did. But it's okay. It's all good. Um, yeah, no big deal. Uh, my point is, is just that if he wants to get centimeter accuracy, luckily it is possible. Okay, so what I'm going to do is talk about what you need to do that what software you need to do that, uh, type of drone, and camera. All right, so let's take it from the top. Number one, in order to get an accuracy of one centimeter or greater, you need a system to follow. That system includes RTK or PPK grade GPS utilizing ground control points that are in your map, and you must fly at a ground sampling distance or GSD below 0.4 inches in order to get the one centimeter of accuracy on the ground. In addition, you need two scale constraints, at least more than 10 feet in both uh, directions, and you also need one that's a vertical scale constraint because you can take that known entity and scale it in your map. And if we do all of those things, we actually can get a map that is accurate to a centimeter. I am not a licensed surveyor, uh, I'm not claiming that my any maps are like that, um, but it is completely possible, and I've seen it done and worked with licensed surveyors who've done it. 
In fact, we're finding that there's more errors with surveyors on the ground than there are in the sky. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, three out of 10 Alta surveys are wrong in the United States. Hmm. Three out of 10. So that's your little plat survey when you buy a house. You got a little, hey, this is the corner of your buildings in conjunction to your lot. That's that's an Alta survey. So, so what about the software involved? Okay, so software. All right, so there's Pix4D, uh, Capture Reality, PhotoScan, Bentley, and Info. Okay. Okay. Now AutoCAD is using Info or Bentley or I can't remember. Drone Deploy was using Pix4D. Now they're using something else. I'm talking about photogrammetry engines because there are a bunch of apps that just use these engines. As far as the best engine for accuracy, I'm going to say number one is Pix4D and number two is Bentley. If I'm looking for the best mapping engine to make pretty models, I'm going to use PhotoScan or Capture Reality. Hmm. Okay. So it depends on what your end use is. Exactly. Okay. Uh, cool. Now, if I want, so he's going for accuracy, not for beauty. So we're going to use Pix4D. If I want centimeter... Uh, level accuracy, I'm going to need something like a Trimble total station or a Trimble uh, GPS unit with Rover. We still have to try out those other, uh, the Reach RS system. Uh, they even offered to send us a unit. We just need to do that. And I need to bring in a doctor of G GIS science to say, how do we actually measure the accuracy of these different GPS systems? Because I've learned it can be very hard. Beyond that, we need scale constraints. So if he measures like the garage door or something and like m writes it on a piece of paper, puts it on there, that is definitely going to help. Same with a vertical scale constraint. Is a scale constraint something that's relatively simple to explain to a those A scale listeners? constraint, like for example, when we did the accident scene reconstruction, um, On God Singh from Pix4D was like, do you have a tape measure in your car? He's like, I know you're one of those guys that carries tools in your car. Do you have tools in your car? And I was like, <laughs> Oh, yeah. I As got a some matter tools. of fact. <laughs> I got a lot of tools in my car. So, yeah, I pulled out a, uh, a measuring tape, and he's like, I want 20 feet, no less, no more. Leave the measuring tape on the 20-foot mark so I know exactly where it is in the map so I can see it. I think he flew a 50-foot uh, nader, 50-foot crosshatch, and then a 50-foot uh, orbit, and he had the scale constraint in the whole thing the whole time. Okay. That's how he knows a known value of 20 feet. Awesome. So if he were to build an ortho mosaic to just do lateral measurements, he's got the scale constraint in the ortho mosaic to make sure that, that it's accurate. can be applied everywhere within yep. that system now. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah. There pretty is, simple. It's not. <laughs> it's not simple. I make it sound simple, but there's a real but method the solution, of madness. The solution is relatively yes. simple. The process is probably I not mean, very simple. I would say the coolest thing that I think also got mapped during the fly-in was On God and, and Josh. So the PIX4D team and Josh Baker, one of the Drone U Elite pilots, went up to Meow Wolf and mapped the big I robot. I heard about that. <laughs> and apparently it was about 10 feet within... Flyable airspace? Yeah. Something really crazy? Yeah, because KSAF is right there. Right. Uh, uh, Santa Fe's airport, which if they would have needed an authorization, I would have sent them mine. <laughs> yeah, it would have been fine, but so, that just made it really, really easy. Yeah, true. But anyway, cool. so we talked about what softwares, what cameras to use, and what drones. First of all, you need a drone with a global shutter. I screwed this up the first time I talked about this, so just to clarify, there's global shutters and there's rolling shutters. Global shutters can be electronic or they can be mechanical, okay? Global shutter is the thing that we want for mapping. Rolling shutter is going to add error into the maps, which is why I don't recommend mapping with any camera that has a rolling shutter. That's you know, the DJI X7, that's the unique Typhoon H520 with E90, rolling shutter. Uh, you know, the best mapping drone right now, hands down, is the Phantom 4 Pro. Not the Phantom 4 Pro V2, the Phantom 4 Pro. Um, and so it, he was asking about stability and all that. You've had no problems with stability to get the kind of images you need with no, that. No, you can't fly in winds pretty much over 20 miles an hour to sure. still be able to map because you're just going to get blurriness in your images. But as far as like focus, fixed focal point, uh, global shutter, good GPS, uh, you know, Phantom 4 Pro is the best. The next best drone after that is going to be any drone that can fly autonomous missions with a global shutter that's a full frame camera. Now, what what meets those criteria? The Intel Falcon 8 Plus, but it's it's it is a I can't even say that on radio. It, it has some it's challenges a, it's associated a with it. 
to use. <laughs> I know that's changing like next week, they say it, but yeah, 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 show us when it works. So the next thing is the M600 with the Ronin MX and a Sony A7R Mark III, which I just learned from Pix4D. I asked the question, can we use a Sony A7 III or a Sony A7R Mark III? If you're not familiar with the difference, one is a 24 megapixel, the other is a 42 megapixel, and I asked at the fly-in. If I want the ultimate mapping drone, which camera am I buying? He's like, well, you're buying a Sony camera because it's a mechanical shutter and it's global. He's like, A7R Mark III, 42 megapixels, that's it. Don't mess with the 24 megapixel version. Hmm. So my pocketbook is going to cry next month when we buy one. But, <laughs> but, we. <laughs> Rob's like, no, we're renting one. Um, anyway, uh, but that's what you need. So, so what's that total setup? M600, Ronin, Sony? 10 grand, 15 grand? The camera itself is 3,100. The lens is going to be, let's say, 1,200. Okay. So we're at 4,300 right now. Mm -hmm. And then take the cost of the drone. Factor. Take the cost of the drone. With, well, the Rona was in that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But don't factor I'm in not, our discount. Okay. Where are we at right now? I understand. <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't know what it was before the discount. 20, uh, let's I thought it was see. like 6,500 for this. Was, yeah, I think yeah. so. We're at about 10, 8. We're like, at $10,800. Oh, and we have no case. We have no SD cards. We have one set of batteries. A it, case is a grand. A case is a thousand. I Another want a case so bad. I'm so nervous to carry that drone around in the expedition. It's funny to see you carrying it around just the drone. We got to get with Rick and get that done. But a case is a grand. Another set of batteries is it's a grand. A grand. So you're up to 13 just with those two things. So yeah, 15 grand. I think it's safe to say it's $15,000. Yeah. Now, to put it in perspective, that's $10,000 cheaper than the Intel setup. That's harder to use, doesn't work as well, same camera system. Interesting. And the weight, the thrust to weight ratio is astronomically different. Huh. We're talking like 15 to 1 versus like 7 to 1. Wow. So, and you can feel it in the sticks. Like, I'm glad we got a chance to, to fly there, huh? the Intel. And I really hope that, I know that they're changing it and they're adding on to it. And I really want to be a part of that beta team to help them. But um, yeah, they it, it needs some work still. That's for sure. Okay, so software we covered, drone we covered, camera we covered. Is it possible for survey grade mapping? Yes, you're going to have type. to. Image type, thank you. Um, so JPEG versus RAW. So one thing that Pix4D tells people is to not take raw images, but one thing that one of our new instructors is finding is that if you take raw images and all you adjust is the highlights and the shadows and you adjust them all to all images in one motion, like, so essentially you go into Lightroom, mm -hmm. take one image, adjust highlights, adjust shadows, and then, you know, command, I think it's command shift C and then command shift V and essentially it'll apply it to all the other pictures because you can't just individually rack you know, highlights and shadows in a raw image and then do it from photo to photo because then your, your, your results will be skewed. Right. You have to do it to every photo the same amount. Which then, is faster anyways in Lightroom true, makes you do that. So True. Once we do that, then we output to JPEG files and then mm. we process. Okay. Now. So yes and yes. When we ask Pix4D about that, it was straight up said, you know, we don't recommend it. But if you look at the best model for drone mapping on Sketchfab, it's Parker Hills, our student. And he's the one who figured out I'm shooting in RAW and then I'm, I'm changing the images. And then, by the way, so uh, Mark Blacklin, super smart guy. Uh, he's worked for us. I know you know because, yeah, anyway, we paid mm -hmm. him to do that mapping of the obstacle course, which yep. drone base ending up drop the whole idea, but we're still going to move forward because I patented that idea. So That's all right. anyway, long story short, Ma Mark Blackland, very, very smart guy, lives in Hawaii. He's mapping. He moved to Hawaii just for a drone mapping job for like the next 10 years. Seriously. You're kidding me. Nope. Did not know that. Wow. So he's a great processor and he was just recently posting in the drone mapping groups on Facebook about which... Um, which drone mapping applications shoot raw images. Hmm. And um, Doug was like, well, what you have to do is open up DJI Go 4, go into the photo settings, change the file type to raw, then go into Pix4D, fire up Pix4D, and it'll shoot all your images raw. That's the secret. Very cool. You just learned something new. Awesome. So, yeah, I learn something new about mapping every day. Like, even, like, talking this much about mapping, I'm just like, wow, there's just so much <laughs> It's to it. amazing, and it's changing so fast. Yeah. There's always new information. It was. I'm so glad On God was there because 
obviously he's he's a cool guy to begin with. Very helpful, very knowledgeable, very smart. But that was a lot of intel you got having him there. Oh, yeah. It was really cool. He's actually doing another class in Montreal, and I'll be attending that class. Um, but, yeah, I'm really excited for us working with Pigs4D. And we've got actually – I can't even talk about it. It's such a cool training. We've got a training coming up in D.C. in October, November with – some very cool people. Yeah. I'm so stoked about it. I can't even talk about it, but I am so stoked about it. Drone use credibility is about to go through the freaking roof. So It's exciting. I'm a, yeah. It's exciting. I, I'm just beyond stoked. So to answer his question, yes, it's possible. Phantom 4 Pro, if he's really going for higher grade accuracy over larger areas, he's going to need that A7R Mark III. Woo! He's going to need a big mapping drone if he's going to go with that. He needs fantastic GPS, Trimble system, total station, both great. Um... He's going to need ground control points, and he's going to need uh, scale constraints. All of that is necessary. By the way, to everyone asking about our new landing pads, I'm actually going to be changing the design of the new landing pads again to add more contrast inside of it. So stay tuned for that. We're also going to be making them a little bit smaller so that people can buy a pack of four of them, like pretty cheap. That's the whole idea. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but anyway, I think that covers it, Rob. I think that was very thorough. Great job. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Seriously. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm not being a smart ass. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> um, if you guys want to learn more about mapping, check out our intermediate mapping class on the website. It is included with membership, so you do get 32 classes for that one low monthly price. Beautiful thing about DroneU is we know your time is valuable, so you can take as many classes as you want for one low monthly price. So anyway, thanks, guys. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask DroneU. Ask DroneU.